We're at the Cimarron Valley Research Station in Perkins. Joining me is Dr. Brian Kahn. Thanks for joining us today. Hi, Kim. Well, I'm really excited about this research project you have going on with companion planting. As you know, I've been doing a lot of programming in IPM and companion planting is part of that. Tell us a bit about this research. Well, it's interesting because there's a lot of like folk information about companion planting mm -hmm. out there, but there's very little in the scientific literature. And the number one insect pest historically in Oklahoma on squash has been squash bug. Mm -hmm. So I thought it would be interesting to try a couple of companion planting treatments just to see if that would help with squash bug management. Yeah, and actually I get the most questions about how do I manage my squash bugs because it's <laughs> such a problem. Um, before we get into the companion planting, you've actually also used a couple of other um, techniques to manage the pest, starting with your cultivar selection. Tell me about the plant you've chosen. Well, the, uh, the cultivar here, you can see it's a nice yellow straight neck mm -hmm. squash. It's called Lioness, and it is a multiple disease resistant hybrid squash cultivar. So we tried to pick something that wouldn't give us a lot of disease problems, and that would let us focus on the insect aspect. It's always good to start with a you know, good, healthy plant selection. So tell me about the treatments that you've used here. Well, a lot of the treatments aren't going to be real obvious to your viewers here, but we've got a control that's just ordinary squash growing on our raised beds. We've got another treatment that looks like that now, but for the first three or four weeks, it had perforated plastic row covers on it, low tunnels, which I know you've talked about. Mm -hmm. uh, that gave some early season protection. Then, of course, as the plants got bigger and it got hotter, we had to take the covers off. Plus, the Oklahoma weather helped. It blew the covers off twice. That was interesting. <laughs> that always happens. It happens. <laughs> and then our two uh, herb treatments, we have white yarrow and we have feverfew as our companions. And why did you choose those plants? Basically went to, again, as I said, there's very little in the scientific literature to help guide. So the uh, organic gardening uh, book recommended that uh, plants like yarrow might be uh, helpful or uh, actually tansy. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, tansy is considered a noxious weed in several western states and it can get to be a big unmanageable plant. So we tried to look for some tansy relatives that might be a little friendlier and more manageable. There's another plus to these herbs that potentially they could be used as specialty cut flowers. Okay. But we don't know if our plots, the squash, will outcompete them to the point that that won't work. That's part of what we're trying to find out. Mm -hmm. And this is the first year of the study, so the herbs are just getting established at this point. Um, but in time you hope they'll get fuller and larger. Yeah, another, another thing we'll want to study is those two herbs are perennials. And so we want to see if the squash is so competitive, we don't know if there's going to be you know, good carryover of the herbs, if they're going to be outcompeted by the squash. When the experiment's over, we're going to take the squash plants out and see if the herbs will grow back and perennialize for us. Mm -hmm. Well, hopefully. I look forward to seeing what comes out of this research. I know it's early on, so we don't have a lot of data, but as you mentioned, there's not a lot of scientific studies of companion planting, so I'm excited that you're doing this research. I am too. It's been a fun experiment. Thanks, Brian. Thank you.